Hi, this is Arianne of Sociable Art, and today I'm painting Tobacco Barn, um, and I'm using one of my Paint at Home, Sociable Art Paint at Home 9 by 12 or 11 by 14 canvas sheets, and these are printed with the design, and all you have to do is fill in with paint, and the kits um, also have all the paints that you need and the brushes, and then you can just watch this step-by-step -step YouTube instruction so that uh, you'll know exactly how to paint this easily and can come out with a finished beautiful masterpiece. Um, what I've done first is I've put uh, masking tape on each corner to secure it in place and then right now I'm showing you how to mix the colors that you might need. Your kit will come with the basic colors but you might need to mix a few. Um, and I like to mix them all in advance. And one color I found I needed with this particular painting is a dark shade of brown. So I mix that from yellow, green, and red. If you mix those three colors together, you'll get a shade of brown. And I just thought that might be nice to have for some of the timbers on the tobacco barn. I like to mix that brown with the black to get a really dark brown rather, rather than just black for that. And so um, it's nice to have that already ready so I won't have to stop to mix that color. Um, another color that you might need is pink uh, for the azaleas that are off in the distance. So for that um, I mixed red and white and then also some greens. You're going to need several shades of greens for the trees. So I did green mixed with blue, green mixed with yellow, and you can also have green mixed with white and black and then I'll give you four different shades of green that you can kind of switch between as you fill in the tree area. Um, also you might need a light blue if you want to have some areas of sky peeking through the trees and that would be blue mixed with white. I also created kind of a sand color or off-white or cream um, and a gray color because you're going to need gray for there's like there's a little sidewalk area in front of the barn and that would be white mixed with black and then the cream color or sand color is uh, white with a teeny bit of yellow and a teeny bit of black. And you could even mix a little bit of that brown in there to get that kind of a dirt or sand color. And um, your kit uh, may come with a palette knife that you can use to kind of put the paints in your palette and mix them. So the first thing that you want to do is paint the background, like the tree area. Um, uh, there's an there's some things in the background in the print that I just didn't want to worry about, so I probably won't print to paint those. But right here I'm just now painting some of the areas of sky that I think that might be peeking through the trees. And I'm just kind of dabbing with the corner of my brush and adding those in kind of randomly. There's no particular place to put them, just wherever you think that a little bit of sky might be peeking through. You don't even necessarily have to have them in there. I just think that that might happen, that there would be some sky peeking through. So make sure that when you're adding those areas that they're just kind of um, irregular and not in any particular shape. They're just like little dabs of the brush. So I'm just going to continue to add a few of those around the canvas. And yours don't have to be in the same place or you don't even have to have any, but just put them where, you, where, where you'd like. Nothing patterned, just kind of random. And here I'm just kind of continuing to do that. So once you're through and you're, you're cleaning your brush between colors, you just want to rinse it in your cup of water and dry it on your paper towel. Next, we're going to get this area here that's sort of a dark area on your canvas. And there are some objects on the print, but what I'm going to do is just fill this in as if it's like a hedgerow or just a dark area of shadows. So I'm going to use green, mix it with some black, and then I'll just fill in that area underneath and kind of behind the trees. So black mixed with green. I want it to appear still like a dark green, not like a black. Anytime you want, you can always pause this video if I'm going too fast for you and just get back to the section you want to hear. Right now I'm just dabbing again with the corner of my brush and just dabbing in this area with the green and black, the dark green. And this could be either a hedgerow or just a shadowed area. Um, it'll be a good backdrop for the lighter green leaves to show upon. So I'm just filling in that area here.
I'm trying not to go over the tree trunks. I'm kind of trying to stay between them. In the end, I want to make sure all of the canvas is covered with paint, no canvas showing through. And always remember, this is your painting, so you can do it the way that you want. I'm just making suggestion of how to do it and how, and just showing you how I would do it. But there's an area off in the distance underneath that tobacco porch where there's a little fence off in the distance. There's also a, a, another building off in the distance, which I decided just to paint over. However, if you'd like to have them, you can paint those in as well and not cover them up as I did. There's also a dark area that I was just showing you under the azalea bush, the pink azalea bush, there's kind of a dark area under there that I'm going to fill in with this same color. I'm almost through with this area. I'm rinsing my brush. And now I'm going to move on to doing some of the dark areas in the trees. We can't have it all one color. It'll just look like a blob of green. So I'm going to add some dark like shadowy areas that will be um, the green mixed with black or either the uh, green mixed with blue. Either of those two shades would work. I'm right now using the green mixed with black and I'm putting it in the areas on the print where it looks like the darkest shade of gray. There's some areas that are a little um, darker than the rest. So that's where I'm dabbing with the corner of my brush and it's just to make those shadowed darker areas of leaves. So there'll be some contrast in your trees. And at some point I'm going to um, pause my video and now I'm going to be moving on to doing a like a time lapse of filling in the rest of the trees. And what I want you to remember as you're filling in uh, the rest of the trees is that you just want to use several shades of green and you want to do this dabbing motion so that it kind of has the effect of looking like leaves. You can add a little water to your paint if you need to. It will make it flow more smoothly. Um, it'll be a looser paint. Um, if you're having trouble filling in the grooves of your canvas, it can really help to add a little bit of water into your paint. And the leaves that you see that are overhanging the tobacco barn, um, those I would not paint until later because we still have to paint the tobacco barn. So I would just leave those ones till later and just paint all the greenery that's behind the barn.
here. I'm just telling you that really should not bother to paint those leaves that are hanging over the barn because we're going to have to paint that area anyway. Uh, so just paint the area just surrounding it and use your several shades of green. I switched to a lighter shade um, here, which is the green mixed with yellow. Um, and I'm probably going to add some of that, just little dabs of it into this azalea bush down here. Um, just because, you know, this azalea bush is, is really going to be in full bloom, so it's mostly going to be red, but there will be a few little peaks of green leaves showing through, so I'm going to add those too. And uh, maybe just a few dabs in the other azalea bush over in the distance. And in a moment, I'm going to switch to a, a time lapse mode so I can fill in the rest of the green. And you can pause the video and work at your own pace to fill in the rest of the green area that's around the barn um, and adding those little leaves in the bushes. So I'll be back with you in a moment. Here I am, fast frame, fast speeding through it. This might be a good time to pause the video and just catch up it if you have to. Um, the great thing about the video is that you can work at your own pace. Here I'm showing that you also can paint this area down here in this corner with green and under the trees. I just feel like there would be a little bit of grass growing in these areas, even though it's maybe not that way in the actual picture. Um, I just added my own little bit of landscaping in addition to what is already there in this beautiful picture. I just thought maybe just a little more green. So I'm using kind of a horizontal stroke, turning my brush sideways and kind of sweeping it across. You can add a little water to your paint. It will help it to flow better here. And I'm using the green and yellow. I'm just showing you how you can use your paper towel to kind of blot uh, the paint. It gives an interesting effect. It's also great to use that paper towel if you uh, put a blob of paint on that you don't like. You can kind of use it as an eraser too. Um, I'm adding just a little green right up next to the barn like there would be some little weeds or grass growing along there as well. So next we need to add a little bit of the sandy uh, color. I'm, I've got the, the kind of a sand color and then that brown color and I can add just a little bit of brown into the sand color and make kind of like an area of dirt and sandy soil in this area. So to fill that in.
And I'm just adding a little of that brown up here underneath the azalea bushes in the distance. Looks like maybe there might be a little walkway along here, just a nice little dirt area. Okay, so here we have the sidewalk area, and I've added a little gray on there, but I just want to note that there's some areas of the sidewalk that are, are a little bit shaded, so those are in the dark gray. Uh, but there's also a part of the sidewalk that's in the bright sun, so it's a very light gray, almost white. Okay, this is just the shaded area of the sidewalk and I created a dark gray and I'm just filling that in a slightly darker gray. Just extending that shadow into this area. It's dark, dark gray and then it turns into a light shade where the sun hits it. See here I'm using my finger to blend between the dark gray and the light gray. It's just an e easy little cheat. Off in the distance the sidewalk gets white again as the sun hits it. Dabbing it with my paper towel. Okay, so now let's fill in these um, azalea bushes off in the distance using a light pink. But I really want to have an area of contrast, like a darker shade of pink that'll be underneath. So I'm dabbing just a little bit of that dark pink first, so I'll have some contrast. Okay, after I add enough of the little dark pink dots, then I can add the light pink. And I'm just dabbing it on. Don't just, it's just the idea of flowers. You might also want to add just a little bit of white mixed with pink for a highlight where the sun's really shining in there just for one third shade. So on this azalea bush in the front, it's a red azalea bush, um, and I want to have some of uh, areas of the dark red, so the other colors will really show up against those. Uh, so I have what, the red that came with the kit, which is just your basic uh, red that we'll use, and then we'll have a lighter shade that we'll use on top. So here I am just dipping in that darker red and then I have the lighter red which is a little bit of white and maybe even a little yellow added to it. 
So my main color of red will be a little bit of white, a little bit of yellow added to it. Um, there will also be um, some darker areas, um, shadowed areas where I add black to my red and those you can see as the darker areas on the print. Um, so dark red, which is red with a little black added for the shadowed areas um, under the bush. Okay, just fast framing through adding the rest of the dark red and then the lighter red shades to this azalea bush. You can even add some shades with a little white added to it. So as we go to paint this tobacco barn, I like to say that we should paint it the way it's been built. And by that I mean we built, we're going to paint the timbers first and then paint the mortar between them, um, just as it would be built. If you want a slightly easier way to do it, you would paint, you could paint the whole thing um, like the dark shade and then put the white stripes on it so you won't have to do two stripes. But the way I'm doing it is I'm going to paint these dark areas first, which I'm going to use black mixed with a little bit of brown. I didn't, didn't want it to be a straight black. I might even lighten it up a little bit with some gray. Um, and I'm going to fill in these dark areas under um, this um, porch roof and then under the eaves on the roof. So I'm going to fill those in first. I'm just using horizontal strokes here to fill in these dark areas. And when it comes to going around these leaves, you might want to switch to a smaller brush if it's easier for you to get amongst those. And at some point I'm going to switch to a time lapse so I can get all those little intricate areas in there. Um, and you won't have to sit there and watch me painstakingly go through them. And I'm also going to fill in some of these um, timber lines on the house. And um, as I get further down on the house where the sun's really shining on the left-hand lower corner, the timber might be a lighter shade, like a, a lighter gray. So I'm not just going to use this dark color. I'm going to lighten it up. I'm going to make it a gray. And as I go down towards that lower left corner, it's going to be an even lighter gray. So maybe you want to mix those different shades of gray before you start. Um, I already have, I think, what I need, so I'll just start doing it. And then notice on the corners there's that darker shade of the chinks. 
So um, I will uh, start doing this so you can get an idea of how it's done and then I'll probably uh, switch to a time lapse at some point and get that filled in. Okay, so I also added this little dark area under the porch and added the dark for the um, support be um, beams there on the porch. Added some dark shades on the door. Um, there was a trash can there in the corner and I decided I didn't want that to be there so I kind of painted over that area. And just um, right now I'm adding a little bit of dark color under the azaleas there. But here the door I'm showing you there were some... Uh, vertical uh, boards on the on the door and I added some dark shades on there and tried to make sure you could see that there were vertical lines for the boards and that those boards were running in a different way. There's also some uh, a little bit of uh, hinges on there that I did with a darker shade. Um, now I'm going to fill in the lines along the eaves of the roof. They are a very light gray so I'll just fill those in. When I do this part where there are leaves going over top of it, I'm just going to paint right over where the leaves are and I can just fill them in on top of that. So I'll just fill that in with the light gray. And fill in this section of the roof too. Just touching up some areas where there was some canvas showing through here. Now I'm doing the trunks of the trees and for those I want to create a light shade of gray that maybe has a little bit of that brown in it. So I fill it in with kind of horizontal little dabs of the brush as I go down the tree trunk and there's going to be a little bit up here in the, the leaves as well, just a little bit peeking through the leaves. And I'm going to fill in with that one color of uh, gray mixed with a little bit of brown and then there will eventually be a highlight on the left side of the tree that's white and a darker highlight on the right side of the tree where the sun is not hitting and that will be almost black and that will give us some contrast. So I'm going to do both these tree trunks and then there are a few other tree trunks showing in the background. You can add as many or as few as you want.
So there were also some branches up in the, the leaves and you can add those. They're very, it's kind of tough to do the, the skinny little lines that are required for the little branches that are showing through the leaves. Um, and you know, it takes some time to learn how to do a fine line or you have to have a very nice brush. So this brush, um, if you want to use it to do fine lines, you have to make sure that you don't push down on it very hard. You want to use a very light touch because as soon as you push down on it, you're going to have the bristles spread out and you're going to get a thicker line. So it's a very light touch. You can either add those branches that you see apparent in the background or you can kind of just leave them as showing through your trees um, on the print and nobody will know they're not painted. So it's up to you how much of those little branches you want to add in there. I'm just using the black, I'm mean, sorry, the, the brown mixed with the gray to add a few branches up in this corner. Okay, adding just a little darkness down there along the bottom of the trunk. Okay, so uh, the next step is uh, to add the uh, mortar. I know it looks sort of like it's already painted, but we still do need to add uh, that mortar into the background between uh, the boards. And what I do is I use that kind of cream color. I already created the sand color, but I mix a lot of white with it. I didn't want it to be bold, straight white, uh, but I didn't want it to be the cream color either. I wanted it to be something in between. So I'll use the brush and horizontal strokes to fill those in. And remember, uh, these this is a rough hewn board. And so the spaces between them are going to be uneven, not parallel. And that makes it easy for you to fill in because it's so forgiving. But they should not be. If you look at the photograph, they're just not straight lines. So here I am in fast frame, just filling those in. And you can pause if you want to take your time to fill them in. Make sure to have those dark areas on the corners of the building and those little squares of dark, those dark squares in there, which I don't know, there's some kind of vent holes, I guess. And right now I'm filling in the dark areas. Um, every third board here above the doorway has a little dark area and over here too. I'm not sure what those are, but maybe support beams on the inside, I would assume. I'm just kind of making a lighter board here where the sun might just hit this shaded area just a little bit. And now I'm filling in these leaves that are hanging over um, the top of the roof. And I'm using uh, both uh, the straight green shade and the green mat mixed with yellow that'll really pop on top of that dark color. 
So I'm right here, I'm kind of filling them in kind of painstakingly, little sp spaces. But there's a quicker and easier way to make leaves with this brush. And um, that is that you put the point of the brush on the end of the leaf, where that little point is on the leaf. You put the point on there very lightly, and then you press down and pull up, and you end up with this leaf shade. It's something you can practice on a sheet of paper. Here I am doing that. It's very quick. So you put the tip down, and you push down and up, and you'll get a perfect little leaf shape. And make sure you don't have any canvas showing through. And I'm just going through and doing that right here. Just finishing filling in all those leaves. Don't forget to put them on the part where you painted the e, uh, the the top of the roof that gray color. I'm just going over here and adding just a little bit of those light green leaves into the azalea bush. Just um, a nice little pop of color in there to have that nice light green, and also in that pink bush off in the distance. You could keep working on this painting for as long as you want, add more detail. I did this rather quickly, so it's all a matter of how much time you want to spend on it. But the whole idea is that you're trying to build your artistic confidence. So, you know, if this painting didn't come out the way that you wanted, please just keep trying because the more that you try, the more your painting will improve and you'll develop your own style. Um, so... Please let your own style shine through and do not be too critical of yourself. And hang this painting on the wall. You can just, you can frame it uh, by buying a preformed, uh, a pre made uh, frame in the correct size. Uh, or you can mount it on a wood um, cradled um, frame that you can get at any of the art stores. And if you enjoyed this, go back to sociableart.com and look at the other paint at home kits that are available. And please um, take time to like and subscribe to this um, video channel or just like the video um, so that we will let you know when we have another video available for you to paint at home. And I'm hoping to create a fall version of this with pumpkins very soon. So if you'd like to see that, just subscribe to the channel. There's a little button that says subscribe, and then there's a thumbs up like button you can hit um, so that I can bring you more of these videos. And I really appreciate you taking the time to watch with me. And I hope you enjoyed the process of painting, and please don't be too hard on yourself. I'm sure you've done a very good job, especially if you haven't painted in a while. You know, give yourself time to develop those skills. And creating these printing ca printed canvases is just a way to kind of help you build your confidence. And then maybe you can go to a, a blank canvas or just one of my sketched canvases. Um, so thanks so much. Hope you enjoyed it.